given, that's how we live it Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians And choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a business Not because they wanna do it, just because they heard it pays And who the fuck wants to be poor, knowing that's how we've been raised Society is getting heavy, I can feel the weight The pressure of success is like a hundred million pounds of shit How you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji Welcome to another episode of Tear Talk Guys, look, I got William Young and I got Connie. Guys, you know how hard that is? Because this is like a mirror. So I was hoping I got the right one. Um, but guys, we're out in Nebraska right now. And we really just got done with just a very, what I feel to be a very successful panel discussion. A lot of interaction. A lot of great dedicated professionals here that work out in Nebraska. And we thought maybe uh, we could answer one of the questions that was asked of us today. Uh, just to give you a taste of what was coming our way today. And then eventually, I think within a week or two, we'll actually have the full video of what we've done from the keynote all the way down to this great panel discussion, which was driven by the questions that were given to us by these uh, professionals in the field of correction, mostly all the jails out here in Nebraska. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna be a quick video. And the question that was asked today, which I thought was a great one, there was multiple ones, but I like this one the most, was about if you're given a supervisory position or kind of like a lead position, let's just say a lead position because it's technically unofficially a lead position, but you yourself have little time on the job. So now like just for a scenario base, let's say you have somebody that may have two and a half years in and they're being told, hey, you got to take this lead position. And now they're put in a position to start training those that are new. You know, what advice would you give that person who feels that they may not be ready? So I'll go first with, with Will, and then I'll go with Connie, and then I'll give my closing remarks, and this will be the quickest video Tear Talk's ever done because <laughs> hospitality night. <laughs> I think the main thing that you need to do is understand your strengths and weaknesses. What do you need to work on? What is your skill set? And then when you're talking, uh, being in a leadership position, uh, you need to know your team. You need to know what they can do and what they can't do. And then as a leader, it's your responsibility to put those people in a place to succeed, right? You don't want to have a person who's uncomfortable, uh, you know, in a communication situation and have him go to the door and talk to somebody. Or you, you don't want to take your littlest guy and make him hold the shield. I mean, you, you need to know those kind of things. And so, so if you know your strengths and weaknesses, you know your team, that'll help, that'll help you be more successful. And then learning about the job, not only from just your department and the training that they give you, but seeking outside information, channels like Tear Talk, um, uh, you know, books and Facebook groups and all these things that are out there, those will help you kind of supplement your education and, and then you'll be able to apply it, apply it on the job. Yeah, I love what Will's saying because he's talking about having that, I think it's, it's, really, it's, it's really team growth. As you can see, it's very active right now. But I want people to know one of the things that we discussed related to this topic was the fact that, you know, a lot of people look at the destination. Okay, now I'm in a leadership position. I've made it. No, guys, you continue to learn. You're not expected to know everything. So I think what for me is I would enter the position knowing I still have a lot to learn and be open to that learning. But again, it's an investment of time. You know, again, if you're going to take it seriously, you have to realize that you're not always going to have the answers. You're not expected to. But are you going to do your due diligence? Are you going to find out? And are you going to be the best um, for that team growth? Because, again, if you're not willing to grow, then you set a lid on the team. Connie, what's your thoughts? So just to piggyback off of what you guys said, you know, my reality is that when someone steps into a role, they're uncertain about what they should do or they shouldn't do. They're not clear on how to lead. You put forth your best efforts, right, to try to make the right decision based on the information you have. But the other side of that is that you've got to tap into the resources around you, right? Oftentimes we don't go to the supervisor because we don't want to look as though we don't know what we're doing. But if you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what you're doing. You're better right. off going to the supervisor saying, hey, listen, this is a decision I'm not comfortable making or I don't know how to make it. Can you help me? Right. That way the supervisor can't say, oh, you never came to me. You never asked me. Who did you reach out to to get support on that decision that you were going to make? And so it helps you feel more confident, I think, over time, but also it kind of helps you share ownership for that decision. So that if the crap hits the fan, you could say, I let people know I wasn't sure what to do. And this is what I did in order to get support to make a better decision. Yeah, and guys, by the way, this is an incident that's happening a lot because we do obviously have a lot of facilities right now that are suffering understaffing and out of desperation. You know, they're giving people these um, positions to lead, I'll say, because again, you're not a leader yet. You're just given the opportunity to lead. And they're hoping that these people can actually be effective. But with that said, you know, they, they have relatively little time in anyway. So they get very nervous because they feel that, you know, am I ready for the position? To be honest with you, 
you know, I don't think anybody's really ready for the position, even even if you have ten, you know, it, right. because you're dealing with human behavior, guys. And in the end, you have to know for a fact that the destination it, it's about the journey. You know, the fact that I'm going into that position, I know I can still learn, you know, and then and then being open to listen to the front line. Because here's a cool thing, guys. When you have finally officially get the position, because it could happen, you just pass the test because you proved yourself to be a leader even when you didn't have the position. So so here, here's the cool thing. The people that respected you didn't respect you based on your position. They respected you at first based on the fact that you know how to relate to them, you know how to help them with their needs and understand their values. And then eventually when you get the position, that's gonna help you because again, you have the people that you already earned that rapport with can help you you know, do what you can in that position and be a little bit more effective. Hey, you guys like saying anything in closing? Well, uh, it was just awesome meeting you guys in person and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel, buy Connie's book, buy my book. And uh, if you have any questions, man, uh, this is the format. Get them out there, uh, put them in the comments, and then we'll answer them. They'll be a shows or be an email. Just, just keep them coming. The only way we're going to grow is through knowledge and information and networking with each other. So. Yeah, guys, don't forget to check out Just Corrections. And what's the name of your two books, Will? Uh, when Home Becomes a Housing Unit and The Nothing That Never Happened. Yeah. As you can see, I was a little bit annoyed because my phone keeps texting. Yeah, and I'm a lot of texts. I'm OCD. Well, you get a lot of texts. And I have to answer them. You can buy it. Just, but I'm doing my best not to answer them. You, you're, yes, fidget. Connie, medically, am I okay? <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, Con? Listen, at the end of the day, I think we all started somewhere. I think that's the point, right? Like, we may not have all been ready for leadership. We probably didn't even think we were leaders, but we were given the opportunity to learn and to become the leaders that we are today. So I would just say, take, make the best of that opportunity, be open to learning, ask tons of questions. Questions is never anything wrong with questions and really just continue to tap into your resources. And we are resources. So feel free to reach out to us if you need us. And not only do we learn from the questions that are asked our way, because we learned a lot today at the conference. I also learned something unique today. For years, I've been pronouncing Connie's last name wrong. What is it? I fucking, I fucking thought it was like Connie Eileen. Eileen. No, it's Ali Neen. Uh, no, it's not. It's huh? Aileen. Oh, sorry. Well, Aileen. What, what, what you Aileen. saying? You say Eileen. 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 It only, it only matters You're to the so person who has that right, last who name. who has the name. It right. really doesn't, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter to thanks. me. It matters Didn't to me. Didn't you say today that labels are important? That names are important? Yeah, he I think did. he did say that. That, that was part of yeah. what he's, yeah. yeah. And here you are. That's what he's selling. Wow. No. <laughs> All right, thank you. The show is called Fair Talk, and we're... <laughs> we're <having guys. laughs>